Mary, good morning. Thank you for being here with us. I guess the first question is sort of right there, the intersection of retail and Washington. We know we're still waiting on some of these details from the stimulus package, but your group and the National Retail Federation had reached out to Washington, worried about the state of the industry and, frankly, the workers. If one in four Americans are employed by retail, do you think this package is doing enough? Good morning, Courtney, and thank you so much for having me on the show today. And yes, I'm thrilled to see that things are progressing in Washington with the bill just passing. There's still a lot to unpack. So it's really uh, a little early to say. It certainly has, we think, many of the right priorities. But really what I wanted to, to mention today is as the chairperson of RELA, which is the Retail Industry Leader Association, um, I just want to help people understand the impact the situation is having on retail and how important it is, to your point, to make sure that we think about retail workers through this. You know, the number one priority for everybody in, in business and in retail that I've spoken to is obviously it's about stopping the spread of the virus and keeping people safe. Um, but as you mentioned, it's 42 million people work in retail across our country, and they rely on retail for their jobs and their livelihood, and we rely on retail right to purchase goods. But it's just a great accessible industry for so many Americans. And, and I know you had Brian Cornell on earlier this morning, who's a fantastic CEO. I'm thrilled that many of the companies that can continue to sell things that we need for daily life, like groceries and drugs and takeout foods and other basics, those, they're running. Those companies and their workers deserve a lot of our thanks. They really do. But, you know, having said that, a huge segment of stores are closed. And that's about half of retail. It's millions of people that are either – furloughed or out of work or laid off. So, well, on the one hand, we absolutely did this, either, you know, really to, to protect the safety and the health of guests in our country at large. Um, and that includes specialty retailers, you know, many department stores, home decor, furniture, beauty. Um, you know, a lot of times people think it's great that e-commerce is up and running, which is great, but 80 to 85% of retail sales still happen in brick and mortar stores. So anyway, so the point is no no company in any industry can sustain without revenue. I mean that's that's pretty obvious. So, you know, I love the collaboration I see happening across companies and industries. Everybody's taking steps again to make sure we're keeping people safe, but and you guys were just talking about this, getting people in the economy back to work when the time is right to do so. That's gonna be critical. And you know, no no two retailers are in the same position, but we as an industry absolutely need to look at options from government assistance to capital accessibility to bridge loans. And, you know, we hear a lot about airlines and hospitality also heavily affected, but retailers as well. Absolutely. And I know your company is trying to compensate workers while stores are closed, as are many retailers. But I imagine that can only realistically go on for so long. And we have no idea how long this virus is going to be with us in the current state that it is. What do you think you do after that? What would be your message to a retail employee right now that may be a little worried about their job and, frankly, their livelihood? Well, I would say, first of all, I'm thrilled to see that there are sectors that are hiring, right, in retail. So that's a good thing for retail workers. You know, I would just step back and say at Ulta Beauty, I'm proud of the actions that we've taken. We've been closely monitoring the situation, acting quickly and responsibly to protect our associates and our guests. Um, you know, we made a decision about a week ago to close all of our stores until at least March 31st. That was not an easy decision to make, um, but we did announce that we continue to pay our store and salon associates as well as their benefits. Um, I'm also thrilled that Ulta.com remains open and it's strong, and I, I want to thank the workers in our distribution centers who are really our front lines right now. So I would just say that I know every CEO I believe this is a universal sentiment. It wants to get back to where we were on March 1st, right? We want our associates and customers back. We want to continue to thrive. Everybody's going to be in a different place on this. And so, you know, while we um, have a, a strong financial, you know, a clean balance sheet, and we think we're doing a great job of managing through this, everybody is going to have to really look at what can we do to help families and help folks who need support. And that's why I'm thrilled in this bill. Things like improvement to unemployment insurance are in there, cash directly to families, et cetera. But the main thing is, as soon as it's safe to do so and where it's safe to do so, putting people, you know, when it's safe to do so, going back to work. I know many people just can't wait to go back to their jobs when that time is right. Uh, Mary, Jim, uh, always great that you call in. Uh, I was getting a little down there because I'm worried about my kids, but including my daughter who shops at Ulta. And I know that when she sees the 21 days of beauty, she doesn't think about going. She goes uh, to the deal because you've got such an unbelievable loyalty program. Could you tell us and how the loyalty program's holding up? And how are the 21 days of beauty? Because you got some great buys here. You're 30% <laughs> off a lot of the faves. 
I love it. Your daughter is a is a great guest. Um, well, you know, I would just step back and say that you know people are, are change their lives have changed overnight. It feels like right, and so this is a time where while folks are working at, at home, certain routines, you know, self self care and beauty and wellness have been intersecting for some period of time. And what we're seeing is, yes, people are very engaged. You know, we have 34 million people in our loyalty program. We have a strong digital connection with our guests, as well as, as you said, things like 21 Days of Beauty, which is a hallmark event for us. And, and we're, you know, we're still doing that because our guests are excited about it, excited about those fields. But we're also seeing, you know, folks getting in, involved in things like, you know, essentials, like, you know, um, shampoo and conditioner, right, but also self-care you know, masks, um, skin care, things that maybe beauty rituals that you have more time to do, frankly, while you're at home. But also many of us are on video conferences all the time, right? I'm on Microsoft Teams every day, and we still want to look at in that environment. So, I mean, there's, we think we can hope to bring a little bit of joy and normalcy to a time that is, is very difficult for all. Well, there are also some good operators that have uh, great balance sheets that I think are going to come out on the other side, while some of the companies, particularly mall-based, may not be able to compete with you. Uh, just talk about what it's like to have a great balance sheet during a period when others are struggling. Well, you know, I, 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 as I said, everybody is in really a different place. And so I feel good about where we are. We have a clean balance sheet. We're well capitalized. You know, as we've been taking some precautionary measures to really increase our financial flexibility, um, to operate in what you all know is, is a pretty uncertain environment. Um, but i got to tell you, I know that for us, just speaking for my company, the strength of our culture, our associates are at the heart of everything we do. Our store associates know how much we care, we care and we're looking out for them. And so I feel like we're going to come back strong because our culture is strong. But I also just want to say, in total, across all of retail, everybody's in a different place, and we need – companies to survive. We need people to go back to work. And so counting on making sure that the bill that passes really thinks this through, that gives us options in terms of liquidity and capital for, for companies at writ large is going to be very important. And Mary, when everyone is able to go back to work and stores are able to reopen safely, what would be your message to both your associates and the customers that come into the store about the safety of things like open makeup right there when we're all being very careful about what we touch and Frankly, we're all being told not to touch our face right now, but that's what you need to do when you go into an Ulta store to have the full experience. Yeah, well, it's a great question. Thank you for asking, Courtney. First of all, I would say right now, if you go onto the Ulta Beauty app, we have an unbelievable augmented reality capability, and we call it Glam Lab, and you can virtually try on every, all sorts of products from lipstick colors to eyebrow shapes. Uh, to skincare uh, r- rituals and, and even foundation matching. And so there's so many things that you can do through digital capabilities that we have that I think that's sort of what I'm recommending to people now are, you know, certainly the joy and the fun and the love of coming into Ulta Beauty and, and having experiences where you're trying things or engaging with guests is kind of core to what we do. We've always had very high standards of sanitation on our testers, but really what we always have done, and we're reiterating this, is to tell, tell guests you know, when we're open again, you want to come in and try something, ask an associate. They'll take that item, they'll sanitize it uh, right in front of you, make sure you try it on your hand, not on your face. And, you know, we feel like that's, that's something that we know how to do well. Uh, but also there's many ways to engage with beauty and serve with their services that we are excited to bring back, as well as trying things online. Mary, specific to how you're operating the company right now, and you and Jim mentioned it a bit, but, I mean, you did draw down $800 million under an existing revolver, which makes sense. You had cash on hand of about $1.3 billion. Anything else you're doing in terms of pulling back on capital expenditures and the like, and how long you sort of see uh, that austerity, so to speak, extending for? Yeah, well, I guess, uh, you know, none of us know how long it, it'll, it'll take for us to be back fully running, but I'm optimistic about that. Um, and what I would say is, yes, we're rethinking all of our priorities to, to really be smart about how do we preserve cash now to make sure that we take care of, of our business and our business needs that are right in front of us, as well as, you know, be in a position to be ready to be up and running strong when we open up our stores again. So thinking about ourselves as an e-commerce only business right now, you know, really focusing on how to get the right messages to the guests, um, thinking about what are things that we can put on the back burner that were longer term priorities that we know we're just going to have to wait on. So we're, go- we're sorting through all of that right now and I think have a good handle. You know, of course, like everybody, I'm with my team every day. This is a 24-7 operation right now that everybody's running and we're sorting through all those, those options and scenarios, I guess is what I call it, scenario planning, to both be nimble but also be cautious about where we spend. 
the consumer was such a backbone of this economy for so long and remained really one of the strongest points. Mary, do you believe that consumer reluctance to spend once this is all over could actually be what takes us the other way? Or do you have faith the consumer will come back as strong as it was pre-crisis? Well, you know, I don't know. I guess everybody will have a different guess on this. And I would just say, as we entered into this year, um, we felt very good about the strength of the consumer. As we saw in our business and other businesses, the economy was strong. Our business had strong momentum. And, you know, as we, we talked about last last quarter. And so we feel, I, I personally feel that, yes, this is a, a shock to the system. And yet it wasn't really, have, it didn't have anything to do with consumer sentiment about how they felt about spending, right, up until this point. So I think we're going to have different ways of, of, of living in some ways. But I, I, we feel, especially in a segment like beauty and for ultra beauty, that going back to normal and enjoying things in your life that you enjoyed before is going to be high on the list of priorities for people. We hope so.